Samsung is the number one smartphone manufacturer in the world, which makes it odd that they don't even break the top five when it comes to laptop sales. It's not to say that they don't make compelling laptops. This is the Notebook 9 Pro from a couple years ago, a 15 inch two in one convertible that actually has a lot of compelling things that it brings to the table. But should you consider Samsung laptops over the Dells, Lenovo's, and HP's of the world? Let's figure it out. You might be wondering why I decided to review a laptop that's now pushing two years of age. And there's a couple reasons, the most prevalent being the display. One thing I've realized is if you wanna buy a high-end laptop, whether it be from Microsoft or Apple or Dell, you're going to have to pay for a very, very high-end display. And usually that's a good thing, but you're also buying a high density display with high pixel counts, whether it be 1440p or 4K, or somewhere in between. The MacBook Pro and Surface laptops only come in one configuration for the screen resolution. And for Dells, they do the worst, where if you want a touch screen, you're going to have to opt for a 4K display, which doesn't make any sense. Now, all three of those manufacturers make incredible displays, but it's kind of disappointing that there's not an option for a 1080p touch display that is quite high quality. I really don't need 4K or 1440p or somewhere in between on a 13 or 15 inch display, especially when I'm sitting back pretty far. I really would prefer high brightness and clarity. And that's exactly where the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro comes in. This is a 1080p display, but is one of the best displays that I've seen on a laptop ever. Now, considering Samsung makes the best smartphone displays on the market, it shouldn't be a surprise that their laptop displays are also very impressive. But this thing is amazing. It's got, it gets just as bright as I need it to. It's super clear and it's got great colors. And even though it's a touchscreen, it doesn't have nearly the amount of glare that I get on something like the Surface laptop. If you just showed this display to me and asked me what density or, or resolution I thought it was, I would say at least 1440p, if not 4K, because it looks super crisp. And the fact is, I don't get close enough so that I can distinguish those extra pixels. Now, not everything's perfect. I would say the bezels are quite large for 2020, and it's thicker than the Surface Laptop's displays. But I would say that if I had to choose, I would put this display on any laptop I wanted to use. And at 15 inches, there's plenty of space for me to work. If you need a laptop right now during the pandemic, I'd say you should opt for a 15 inch model or at least a larger 13 or 14 inch so that you can have more usable space since we're not carrying these around in our backpacks as much as we used to. Now, I usually don't talk much about the speakers of advice, but I have to call out these because they're absolutely terrible. Like seriously, you could listen to Netflix on full volume in bed with your partner trying to sleep and they wouldn't even hear it. Now, a lot of people, they don't really care too much because they're just gonna plug in headphones. But for me, I would love to use this as a content consumption device, setting it up somewhere when I'm cooking or working on a project and just having it play Netflix or YouTube. But it's kind of sad that I'd have to wear headphones because I wouldn't be able to hear it over the microwave. Now, as far as the rest of the laptop goes, the design is quite clean. I'd say the curves are pretty subtle and the color is nice, but it really doesn't look as flashy as a lot of other laptops out there. I think Samsung kept it relatively tame such that you really can't distinguish between this and the Chromebook Plus, which is a fraction of the price of this. But one of the pieces of the design that I really do appreciate is the hinge. Now, I'm really stuck up when it comes to a stiff, strong hinge that doesn't move around a lot or let the screen bounce when you're typing on it, because I've had that problem with Surface Books and HP Spectres. But this one has no issues whatsoever. It's very rigid such that if I move it around, it will stay in place, but it won't bounce around when I'm typing. Now, when it comes to performance, obviously this is not going to perform on the same level as an i7 chip from 2020, especially because Intel and AMD are really, really pushing the bar forward when it comes to processing capabilities. 
This system does have a quad core i7 8th generation, which is still quite fast and will probably be competitive with some mid-range processors nowadays. And it has an entry level graphics card, a Radeon 560. Now that's not great, but it does manage to handle some online games without stuttering. I don't think you're gonna be playing any AAA titles on this, but it's nice to know that it does have that as an option. When I was using it, I did notice the laptop getting really hot, but the fan remains relatively quiet and not too annoying. I think that's always going to be a trade-off. I would opt for something that's relatively quieter and maybe drop a couple frames. But if you would prefer a super high-end gaming laptop, this is not your solution. Now for 2020, the port selection is quite amazing. It does have a full-size HDMI, a USB port, the power jack, and a couple of USB type A's, which is fantastic. The issue is the USB type C is not Thunderbolt, which may or may not matter to you. But more importantly, I did have problems connecting this to a few of my docking stations around the house and having it work properly. Now, I think this came back from a time in 2018, USB-C was still not quite perfect. And so some of the docking stations just aren't properly compatible with it, which is a real letdown when it comes to connecting this to a monitor, keyboard and mouse and using it like a full desktop. When it comes to the keyboard and the trackpad though, they are both excellent. I would say the key travel is somewhere in the mid range. That's a nice travel and it feels good and there's a lot of response. You do tend to bottom out easier than you do on a lot of other laptops, but I don't find a lot of problem with that. There's a lot of similarities in general key travel feel to the XPS 15 line, but I will say that the keys have a smoother feel than you would get on an XPS, so it's not as sticky on your fingertips. There is an extra dedicated column for home, page up, page down, and end, which can come in use to you. Unfortunately, with these type of laptops, I never get used to having that extra column. And so I end up always pressing the home button when I'm going for backspace or the end button when I'm going for shift. And that always can bother me. The trackpad is one of the largest that I've seen on a Windows laptop. Not quite as large as maybe the new XPS 15 and 17s, but still excellent, super smooth, super cool to the touch. I really, really enjoy using it and it's one of my favorites. Except for I do have some problems with palm rejection not always working, so I sometimes tap on the, on the trackpad with my palm while I'm trying to type on the keyboard. That's a little bit of a disappointment, but I still like having this extra space on the trackpad. Now, when it comes to software on Windows laptops, there's not always a lot to talk about because a lot of the times the software is pretty consistent across, but Samsung does come up with some additional applications for the included S Pen and some other Samsung specific functions, but I didn't find myself using those too much. And I didn't find myself using the S Pen because it's quite small in comparison to some of the larger ones you'd get on the Galaxy tabs. The pen does work smoothly and it does work generally well in most applications. It's just not for longer term writing. This is another place where I think Samsung could push a little bit harder. Samsung has been working hard with Microsoft in order to integrate the operating system on Windows computers and um, Samsung phones. But unfortunately that's across all laptops. And I really think if Samsung wanted to push this ecosystem concept, since they have products in just about every corner of the market, I think they really could do more in making your Samsung phone pair easier with your laptop. But I still think there's a lot to do for Android and Windows feels as close as Mac OS and iOS. Maybe we'll get there eventually, but I think Samsung is the company that needs to push the hardest because they have the most penetration when it comes to smartphones and they do have a laptop business. I think Samsung should set an example with their laptops rather than just creating relatively vanilla copies of Windows. Now, would I recommend the Notebook 9 Pro in 2020? For the right price, sure. I think the processor is capable enough to get you by for at least another couple of years, and if you care about maybe photo editing and some light games, then the entry-level graphics card will do okay. 
I will say the battery life on this unit specifically is quite a bit worse than it was when I reviewed the laptop in 2018, but it is still a decent device. And I love the big screen. I love the, the touch screen. I love the keyboard and the trackpad. And I just don't like the speakers. And generally, a lot of people won't care about that. It just matters for me because I want to use this as a Netflix device or a YouTube device, and I can't because of those speakers. Thank you for watching NOISO. Have you gotten the chance to use a Samsung laptop like the Notebook 9 Pro? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. And if you haven't already, be sure to get subscribed and there's more content coming your way. I'll see you in the next one.